Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your daily dose of spiritual vitamin. Here with me, Bonnie. Now, this morning, I was sitting up here and I was studying and I was reading some books and things like that as I was just meditating on what I wanted to do today. And the Spirit of God took me to the apocalypse. Because, of course, me thinking, you know, I want to teach today. I want to teach something fun and exciting. And teach something that, you know, I think would, you know, be fun. And the Spirit of God said, well, that's all good. But this morning, I want you to do a little scripture study in that. You've been studying these documentaries. And you're learning about where money ain't. <laughs> You know, the tricks of the enemy and pulling out all of these strongholds for me. So, this morning, the Spirit of God led me to the book, the second book of Esdras. Now, Esdras is in the Apocrypha. One of the books that the Archbishop Canterbury made a decree saying that if this book was not contained in the Bible that they suffered um, heavy fines and possibly a year imprisonment or both. Now this is doing 212 AD. This is the Apocrypha. Archbishop Canterbury, Josephus and several others were all around during the days of the Galatians and the Corinthians after the death of Christ AD on take the AM or something like that. Anyway, moving forward. So this morning Lord had me studying in the Apocrypha. Seventh book of Ezra. And the more I read, the more I began to cry because I was giving the rejoicing and praising God for the accounts in which he had blessed me to be able to read and understand, seeing its fullness. And the Spirit of God said, well, why are you doing that and praising me? This morning, I want you to give them a spiritual Bible. But I want you to give it to them a story time. Story time. So, being obedient to the God that I serve, He says, give it a story time. So, today, we're going to have for our spiritual Bible story time with Esdras. Story time with Esdras. Let's go say yes. We're going to start our story time with Esdras. Pay attention to what we hear. Because we're going to start this story time in the seventh chapter. Second Esdras. Listen carefully. You can learn some stuff just like I did. I'm going to end with the last chapter, the last scripture from chapter 6, verse 58 in Second Esdras. Chapter 6, verse 58, before we pick up our necessary by the way for this day. Now mind you, I'm going to go to chapter 58. I'm going to set a scene. And I need you to listen carefully as the story unfolds before your eyes and ears as you envision the story that Ezra wants you to hear. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us begin.
O oh Lord, behold these brethren which have been reputed as nothing, and has begun to be lords over us, and to devour us. These are the giants. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, thy fervent lover, are given unto their hands. So the people of the land are turned over to the giants who are the watchers, the fallen, the offspring, the offspring. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess the inheritance with the world? How long shall we endure? Chapter 7 And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angels, which have been sent unto me the nights of four. And he said unto me, Up, Esdras, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my God. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance, when narrow, and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it, and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There it is also thing, another thing. A city is built. And is set upon a broad field, and is full of good things. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fail. Like as if there were fire on the right hand, and on the left, deep water. And one only path between them both. And even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive his inheritance? And I said, It is so. Lord, then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sake, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. There were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that were laid up for them. Now therefore, why disquieted Thou self, seeing thou art but a corruptible man. And why art thou moved? 
whereas thou art but mortal. Why hast thou considered in thy mind this thing that is to come? Rather than that, which is present. Then answered I and said, O Lord, thou that bearest rule, thou that has ordained in thy law that the righteous shall inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why? For that have done wickedly has suffered the straight things and yet see and not see the why. And he said unto me, There is no judge above God. And none that hath understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life. Because they despise the law of God that is set before them. For God hath given straight commandment to such as came. That they should do to live even as they came that they should obey and observe to avoid punishment nevertheless they were not obedient unto him but spake against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But his law have they despised and denied his covenant. And his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore, Estrus, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. Behold, the time shall come, and these tokens which I have told these shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and she coming forth shall be sent that is now withdrawn from the earth. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice with the four hundred years. After these years shall my son Christ die. And all men that have life. And the world shall be turned into old silence seven days. Like as in the form of judgment. So that man shall remain. And after seven days the world that yet awaketh not. Shall be raised up. And that shall die. Is corrupt, and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and shall go, and so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence, and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment. 
and misery shall pass away, and long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain, truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong, and the work shall follow, and the reward shall be shown, and the good deed shall be a force, and the wicked deed shall bear no rule. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites, and Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness, and Jesus after him for Israel in the time of Achan, and Samuel and David for the destruction, and Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary, and Helios for those that received rain, and for the dead that he might live. And Anakas, Ezekias, for the people in the time of the senatorship, and many for many, even so now, saying corruption is grown up, the wickedness increased, and the righteousness, and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so also? He answered me and said, This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak? But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for the come. Where corruption is past and temperance is at an end and fidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown and truth has sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying. That is, it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in the heaviness and after death to look for punishment? O oh, thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not falling alone but we all that come of thee for what profit as it is unto us if there be promised us an immortal time whereas we have done the work that brings about this death and that there is a promise us an everlasting hope whereas ourselves being the most wicked are made vain and that they are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety whereas we have been wickedly and that the glory of the most high is kept to defend them which have laid a weary life whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all and that there should be show a paradise whose fruit endure forever where it is secured it has security and medicine 
such we shall not enter into it? For we have walked in unpleasant places. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars. Whereas our faces shall be blacker than dark. And huh, for while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer, for it is after death. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the things that I say. For this is the life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee. That thou mayest live. Nevertheless, they believed him not, nor yet the prophets after him, nor men which have spoken unto them. That there should not be such heaven in their destruction, as shall joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. I answered them and said, I know, Lord, that the Most High is called merciful, and he hath mercy upon them which are not coming to the world, and upon those that have turned to his law. And that is, he is patient, he's long suffering. Those that have sinned as his creatures, and that he is bountiful, for he is ready to give where it is needed. And that he is of great mercy, for he multiplies more and more mercies to them that are present that, than that are past. And also to them which are to come. For if he shall come not, for if he shall not multiply his mercies, the world will not continue with them that inherit them. And he pardoned. For if he did not sow his goodness, the day which have committed iniquities might be eased of the ten thousand parts of men should not remain living. And being judged, if he stood not, forgive them that incurred with his word and put out the multitude of contentions, there should be very few left per adventure in the innumerable multitude. So you see, although we may be in this existence, and we may not really understand. God is trying to get us to see that when you live your life on this side, in his service, following the narrow way, for why does the word world to perdition? Meaning, you can do all of these things right now and live in it. But in the end, you suffer damnation. But if you get on this path and follow what it is that he wants you to do at this frame time in your life, if you give it over to him, if you allow him to show you, teach you, groom you in his statutes and his ways, Live for him now in this straight and narrow 
because when it's all said and done that narrow path that you walk opens to a door of abundance and on this path that you is going to meet your needs. He's going to take care of you. He's going to do all the things that you need him to do for you as you do his will in the narrow path. See, the narrow path is that path less taken. It's the path that you take once you come into enlightenment and awakenness of consciousness and you are aware who God is. Now you can walk in that path of awareness and righteousness. Now you can walk in the statutes of God. And he'll bless you. Because walking in that path of righteousness, walking on that straight and narrow path, it's a path you gotta walk by faith. It's a path you gotta walk because you believe the statutes in the Word of God. You keep yourself chaste until He sends you to His God for you. And you just seek His face. That's all you do, you just seek His face. Seek it in knowledge, you're seeking in education, you're seeking in arts and crafts, you're seeking in things that you do with your hands and all thy ways that you acknowledge. And he will bless you. So, for your daily dose of spiritual vitamin today comes from the conversation of story time with Esther to help you understand why we on this path. And that there is a bounty. That's our spiritual lesson for today. This is our vitamin. And now, we want to be blessed. It's time to come back. With another vitamin to help you. On this path. To enlighten you. To seek in the face of God. And what it is he wants you to do with your life. We'll come back and we'll do some more. For our information. Give you more understanding into the importance of different aspects of your chart and why it's important to get them. You will be blessed. If you like what you see and you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button for me, please. Till I see you again.